Hi friends, hope you are doing fine. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about five points which are important if you want to get a position in industry. And essentially this video is largely directed at people with PhD degrees, but will also be useful for anybody who has a master's degree. So let's begin. So number one thing is that you should choose a PhD thesis topic or a master's thesis topic which is relevant to industry needs and this requires you to be somewhat cognizant about what's going on currently in the industry so whatever your field if you are following what's going on if you are following the literature following the things coming out in the magazines in the popular science shows and so on you know what's happening in your field so for example if you are somebody in the computer science domain you would know that at this time machine learning and AI are hot topics. If you are in the biological systems, you know that at this time, biotechnology, molecular, biological discoveries, genomics, bioinformatics are very hot areas. And in every given field, you know exactly what is the hot topic in that area. So if you are trying to do a PhD and you have industry in mind make sure that you get into one of these topics you do not get into some of the topics which are very academic in nature for example it may be that some aspects of nano science are extremely university centric or there may be problems in physics for example string theory which are not amenable to industry jobs in a direct manner now remember it's always possible that if you are somebody working in string theory you may develop a lot of strength in mathematics and some strength in computation and you can get a job as a data scientist or something like that but that would not be a directly applicable job whereas if you are somebody who has done his or her PhD in machine learning or cyber security or genomics or even computational fluid dynamics you can essentially get an industry job doing exactly what you have trained for as a PhD so keep that in mind now the next thing is that you need to make a mental change from paper mode to project mode and this is the most difficult path for a PhD student because your advisor is going to keep talking about journal publications conference publications and so on and while you do write these papers publish these papers keep in mind that your entire PhD degree is essentially a project and you divide this project into several sub projects and you do this degree so that's exactly what your PhD is so in many cases if you have some idea about project management you will be better at doing your PhD and in fact you can look up some literature and books on project management even probably take a course in that subject because that's going to certainly help you know how to implement projects because the main difference between industry and university is that the universities are in paper mode whereas the industry is in project mode. So when you give interviews to the companies you have to make it very clear to them that you have done a sequence of projects as your PhD degree and these projects are the ones which you have got your training in. Now number three is that you should have a few good papers in journals. Now why is this necessary? This is necessary because when some company is hiring a PhD they do expect this PhD to be of high quality and even if they are not in the publication game they know that PhDs are supposed to publish papers so if you have published in a few good journals it's going to come across that your PhD is a good piece of work and that you are a meritorious student so do remember that they are always going to consider a few journal publications this may be just two or three or something like that but it's going to help out very well do remember that if you have too many journal publications such as 10 to 15 or 20 journal publications they are going to think you are more of a paper type of person and therefore better suited to the postdoc and the university career path so essentially people who write too many papers tend to fall in love with writing papers and then end up becoming professors at university so keep that in mind now the next point is that do make sure that you attend conferences or at least one major conference towards the later half of your PhD degree 
and this is important because let me tell you that most of the company guys are not going to read journal papers they are however often present in conferences speci specifically trade conferences so essentially there are all these conferences which are somewhere in the middle of academia and industry these are sometimes known as trade conferences and these are conferences where you get people from for example google facebook intel various companies as well as from universities around the world so what happens is that there is a mingling of ideas from industry and university and so these conferences are good to go to now the other important thing is if you make a paper presentation at these conferences the industry people are likely to be there in the session even the session chair may be from some industry and they are going to look at your paper they are going to listen to what you say and they may remember your name so these become direct points to whom you can contact later now if you go to a conference make sure you get to know the name of these people maybe chat briefly with them and later as soon as you go back to your university make it a point that you send them a linkedin request and make them part of your network so that's something very important because later you may not remember these people and their name and their connections nowadays people typically do not carry business cards so it's not possible to get business cards from people but most people do have a linkedin profile so you can connect with them right after you meet them at a conference now the number fifth point is progressively expand your network and this includes your strong network and your weak network strong network of course are the people you know in your university your advisor the different professors the different people you interact with strongly and so on but the weak networks are for example these people you meet at the conference they may be people you run into at various points they may be people who edit your journal papers and so on so make it a point to know these people very well now beside this one thing i would tell you is that as and when you are graduating put your resume or cv up on the different websites for jobs for example indeed.com ziprecruiter.com and so on because very often there is a hidden job market there are a plethora of small companies out there which are going to look at the different resumes they naturally don't put out an ad directly on these websites because they are often deluged by a plethora of resumes from around the world so what they do is they instead search for the candidates resumes and so putting up your resume is going to certainly help your case so these were some points i had for you today about how to increase your chances in getting a faculty position or rather in getting an industry job and i hope you benefit from this video i will see you sometime soon see you then